And all it takes to fall is a disruption in our center of mass basis support relationship that we are counting on being there. So let's take a look at some of those. Balancing versus fall prevention. The relationship between standing balance, standing still balance, and falling, and recovery from falling is not immediately obvious. And what do I mean by that? I'm trying to say, if you jump to conclusions and go, well, the better your balance, you're not going to fall. First of all, recovering from falling and not falling are two different things as well. So let's take a look at some of these things. <clears throat> when do people fall? Again, who are we talking about? Back to that center of mass, basic support thing. Do people fall when they're standing? Um, some older people do. Some people who get dizzy easily do. There can be vestibular dysfunctions, temporary or chronic, where people might fall while they're standing. There certainly can be other things that we're probably not putting in here, like they might have a minor stroke, they might pass out, they might, I don't know. That's really not what we're talking about in this specific scenario. But standing probably is the least of the concerns when they're standing on both feet. <clears throat> now, if they're diabetics and they can't feel the bottom of their feet, interesting. If their feet fall asleep, interesting. Is walking a scenario where people fall? It, it commonly is. For the people who fall and have the most, have the worst outcome from it, the most dangerous potential outcome, fall, uh, walking is common. And another one that's even a little more treacherous, besides going up steps and all those things which we would already assume, turning. Because when these older people or people who are not good at owning their body, and I need to stop, I need to stop putting an age association with it. Because I know plenty of people in their 50s who are already beginning to have trouble with this stuff. Certainly by 60s, and without a doubt by 70s, people who have, have had a deconditioning. We're going to talk about the processes by which whatever they might have had that they were pretty good at a long time ago have slowly diminished over time. They didn't just go away yesterday. Wow, I turned to 70, everything went to crap. That's not the way it works. While there may not be a steady slope, there may be some exponential curves. Um, some of these things are a little more precarious than others. And turning can be one of them. And a lot of that can have to do with the vestibular mechanism. It also can have to do with can their rotational requirements to get their base of support in a new position, can it keep up with what they're doing? Turning their head separate from their body. There's a lot of interesting vertigo-related scenarios associated with that. So let's talk about ambulation. Ambulation is not just walking. <clears throat> walking, running, walking sideways, a variety of things. And I bring this picture up here of the sand for a very specific reason. It's really important to recognize. Do you see how, and you've seen this like around swimming pools where the, someone's foot is wet or whatever and they watch them walk. The, if we were to draw a line between um, the feet, if, if, pretend that's a straight line. <laughs> um, the feet are considerable width outside of that. They are, they are not lined up whatsoever. We are not walking like we're walking on a beam or a tightrope. And I'm not sure we ever should in real life because there's an important skill we learn here that whatever, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 months, whatever it is, we're giving it a little kid. Um, I think for our daughter 10 months was a magic number. But um, your center of mass is never really balanced over your feet. Now it's not dead center in the middle, but your center of mass is not doing this either. It's not going over here with this foot and over here with this foot. It doesn't do this. That's not what your pelvis is doing. Because you would literally, or well, that person would have been like this as they walked. Now maybe after enough alcohol that might be true and might be required, but it's not what we're looking at here. What you've really got going on is your center of mass may sway ever so slightly, but probably ends up being more of a straight line than we think. This foot has to land there because your center of mass is not only not over your foot to the side, to the medial side, 
it's passing over the top of it, and I don't mean directly over the top of it because it's not over it this way, but it's also going over you forward. There's a forward momentum, if you will, of your center of mass. This guy has to be there to catch it. There's a lot of ways I'd like to try to describe walking, but it is never a balanced scenario. Not the one we'd equate with static standing balance or single leg balancing. You could say you're constantly falling. It's not exactly true because you're propelling and falling. So you propelled and created an inertial momentum scenario and this new base of support better. You know what happens when you trip? I don't know where that term came from, but when you trip, it's because you expect your foot to be there, your foot needs to be there. But somehow something stopped it from when it was back here and it got caught and this keeps going. So the whole thing becomes, can you recover from that? Can you get something out there in time? Hopefully the thing that tripped it let go of it. Hopefully it was just a stubbed toe or something, so to speak. But this is a very precarious scenario. And it shouldn't surprise us that people who don't start to lose sensation, people who can't dorsiflex well enough and so their foot, their toe drags as they try to swing through, those, there's so many things that could interrupt the teetering, falling, propelling, catching process that we ignore for the most part, we, we assume is going to be there, that we take for granted. We spent a considerable time learning, but it was during the part of our lives where we are amazing motor learners. Our brains crave it. It's part of development. We don't automatically walk, but we automatically crave doing it. We're so good at learning. We're trying to get to from here to there. Never have to say to a kid, <clears throat> try to stand up at the coffee table. There's some good stuff up there. I mean, you have to move all the stuff because you know it's getting ready to happen. And when you work with kids with a variety of different <clears throat> um, neurological disorders or orthopedic disorders, and they aren't able, they don't, they're, not, they're not able to or they don't even produce that craving. It's a very interesting scenario. But anyway, um, it changes, and you're, this changes with speed of gait. It changes, it could change with surfaces, without a doubt, if it was super uneven, rocky stuff. These, although it's not the same angle of appearance, so it's hard to tell, these are a little more in line with each other, and um, potentially, this guy was moving faster, and as the stride length increases, there's a greater tendency to start to you know, not waddle so much to the side and start to line these things up. Another thing we also don't have is any evidence of who these people were. So the only way I could say any of these things are truly accurate is if this same person and this same person made these tracks but they were doing something different. I can't take two different people and not know their hip muscular musculature ability, their sensation oriented abilities in their foot and etc. Anyway, I just want you to see that there's not a standard that there's not a perfect balance scenario, that things do change when we change the form of ambulation, rate of speed, that kind of stuff, goal of the ambulation. This is a great example. Our little friend here who is really good at standing on one foot, I told you before, she's playing a game. She just does stuff for fun, touching each shoulder while she's standing on the other hand, but she's not really standing on the other hand. If that doesn't get back down there pretty fast, she's falling. She never actually gets her, her center of mass over her base of support. So there was a little bit of a precarious thing closely related to walking. Same thing here side to side, only she's also having to build up some forward momentum and control that. And she did a lot of little extra things to make a challenge to control that. but. It, you think that's hard and you take walking for granted, it's the same thing. And you're going, it's not the same thing. It is the same thing in terms of what's required in terms of mechanics. Core may be different without a doubt when you're walking on your hands, without a doubt. But the mechanical scenario where we're never balanced, so tripping doesn't take much, that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Fall recovery. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a video that is amazing. And then we're going to talk about actually recovering from falls.
<laughs> you hear that guy laughing, it's awesome. Now the sad thing is, the first time I watched this, all I saw was this home exercise piece of equipment where there's a press here and there's like a chest fly thing here. But <clears throat> what was that guy doing? <clears throat> Number one, that wasn't choreographed, as you can imagine. Um, it was amazingly orchestrated though. I always think it's funny to, you know, to show this to a group of um, cult-oriented functional trainers. So I'm going, how would you train for that? What motor skills do you think standing on one leg, balancing on one leg is going to train you for that? I'm not saying that it's not going to do something, but it's not going to fully prepare you for that. He went to ranges and positions that he would never do in the gym, on surfaces that he would never find in a gym. And if they were in a gym, there would be a major lawsuit <laughs> for trying to create, recreate such a scenario. There's, there's always so many things you can do to train for that. And among the most important things are going to be your balancers. Can you get your foot where it needs to be fast enough? And it all starts with how quickly do you recognize things are going wrong? That recognition has to be fast. <clears throat> too many older people, too many deconditioned people, too many people that don't own their bodies, they don't start recognizing that their center of mass is headed towards an edge until recovering from it would require a lot of output. So that's the next thing.